Ipswich. That's that's been uh, uh, a big success story. We've sort of gone from something running around the ground to, to our friend over here. Uh, yeah, indeed. Um, yeah, and yeah, I, yeah, I understand are. that um, you've been very instrumental in the in the rock control program, and perhaps you might like to tell us the sort of numbers we had, and how, however many years ago that was, and where, where they're at today. And, and I believe you've had a few adventures hanging underneath helicopters and things. Yeah, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a very interesting uh, program. The um, Rooks in New Zealand, it was uh, 1870s, they were introduced into New Zealand by the um, Climatisation Society. Um, the 72 birds released in the Hawke's Bay, 40 birds in Canterbury near Christchurch and um, got up to 20,000 birds in Hawke's Bay area and probably 10,000 birds around Banks Peninsula. Um, the Peninsula birds of uh, you know, yeah, varied sites, all, all the different bays around the Peninsula actually had, had rookeries of some sort in them, but when they really took off was when the cropping st started to get underway at uh, around Lincoln, all right. Green Park, Darfield, the numbers really took off then. So, yeah. so they're quite a pest in crops, are they? Yeah, travel a long way to get a good food supply. Um, they'll attack the crops when they when they're planted. They'll pick up seed out of the ground. Uh, when the seed strikes, they'll they'll nip the tops off the seed. And when the seed is harvested or the crop is harvested, they'll go back and have another go at the uh, the scattered seed left lying on the ground. So the cropping has presented them an exceptionally good food supply. And being such good flies, they'll, they'll travel the food to meet to get the food supply, mm. the food and, source. Um, the, uh, as I said, we have been quite successful control. So, would you like to tell us how, how that's been achieved? And yeah, it's, uh, yeah. It, there's been a lot of changes in that. In the early days, they were using um, 1080 poison, and uh, just out of Christchurch, they ex ex actually blew up some of the rookeries. All right. Yeah, yeah, and um, trying to trying to kill them off. Um, known as the Sunnyside Rookery, they, they blew that up many years ago, and to uh, various successes. Farmers have tried exterminating them or eradicating them by shooting and uh, cutting down their rookeries, which only fragments the mob. A lot of cases they end up closer to the house than when they when they started. And, and the main problem that farmers on the uh, peninsula have had with them is the noise factor. Extremely noisy bird. They're, they're quite intelligent birds, too, aren't they? Absolutely, yeah. They're very, very intelligent birds. Does that pose problems for their control at all? It does, yes. We've tried um, lots of different baits. We bait them, have baited them with uh, walnuts on the peninsula. It's their favourite favorite food supply. Uh, bread. Um, we've used uh, macaroni. We, we, we cooked macaroni and, and used that as a bait there for quite a... And that was the main success on Banks Peninsula. They worked exceptionally well. Must have been Italian rocks. Yeah, must have been. Yeah, yes, indeed. Um, when it's cooked up and put on the ground, I, I think it looks like grass scrub. So they, you know, they, they got onto it. So it worked really well. Um, so we've tried different, different mm. baits for them, and uh, the main uh, method we've now have of, of exterminating the rocks is, and it's used throughout New Zealand. We've we've made up a or developed a bait that can be uh, put in the nest by a. a extruded um, bait gun right. and uh, get a, a person on a strop underneath the helicopter and the bait is put onto the into the nest when the when the uh, rook is nesting when the chicks are in the nest which works extremely well it only kills the rook mm -hmm. and uh, no other birds have contact with the poison uh, the poison is, uh, is called DRC 1339 it's a starling side so it doesn't kill other birds or other animals, and um, the dead bird is not a problem to uh, hawks and things predating on the on the carcass. So we don't carry on killing other things. There's no secondary kill using DRC 1339. And how many rookeries are around now? I've, I've heard a story that there's perhaps only male birds left. Is that right? And yes, and what that's right. Rob. What we found with the with the tree baiting was. It is biased towards the female bird because she's sitting on the on the chicks and the eggs more than the male. And in the Canterbury area, we haven't had a a, a, a mating pair of birds for probably four or five uh, five years now. Five years. Yeah, now. yeah. And uh, we believe that all the all the birds we have are males. And we're looking at probably 12 birds in the Canterbury region now. Right. So we're looking at extermination. Um, by 2011. 
That is, that is that is a, that is a, the plan. That sounds excellent. So, yeah. Mm. So how many years has it taken us to get from those ten thousand birds to to these few old bachelors flying around a bit upset? Yeah. Um, yeah, 1980 we had we had big numbers of birds on the peninsula, which and we tried baiting with, with various baits, and we couldn't we couldn't get them on baits at all, and the population was increasing. Um, and since then, it's been uh, once we crack crack the bait you know, using the uh, macaroni and things like that, um, it's been uh, uh, downwards ever since. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Really it's been really, really, really interesting. A lot of time goes into it. The ground baiting is very time consuming. You, you're pre-feeding for up to a week. And the day you put the poison out, that's the day the farmer does something, shifts a few sheep in a mite in the paddock, and they all go, and you never see them for another month. And very frustrating work, but it's uh, and again, that's where the helicopter work has come to its own because we know the birds where they are, and uh, they're going to be there for the next month. So um, interesting thing that's been carried out in New Zealand is New Zealand has been the only country where we've done a, a census of, of birds. It's carried out first week of October, and it's done throughout New Zealand. So we do a, uh, a nest count of rooks, and it's done throughout New Zealand. Every area that has rooks, they go and do this nest count, and we're able to get a, a plan of how many birds we have in the area, and uh, increases or de decreases from the previous year. Yeah. Mm. And, and is that success story in Canterbury um, being seen elsewhere in, in New Zealand where there are rooks? In Hawke's Bay, where, yeah, sure. In, in Hawke's Bay, where the, um, the major rook populations have been, uh, now they've got onto the nest baiting with a helicopter. They've they've reduced their numbers dramatically. So, and so your pioneer work spreading throughout the country. Yeah, well it has. Yeah, it's pretty good, really. Um, Greater Greater Wellington Regional Council are onto it, and uh, yeah, I think the, most the, most of the regional council are using it as a control method because it's quick and you're only targeting the rock. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, that's really quite important, being able to do that selectivity, really, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Um, one of the problems we had on Manx Peninsula in the early days was uh, bread baits were the, were the registered bait to use for rock control, but as soon as we put bread out on the peninsula, you get flocks of seagulls coming in. So, um, yeah, just a no no, you can't do it. Yeah, so we had to you know, hunt around and find other, other baits that weren't, weren't going to cause a problem. That sounds like a very interesting job. Yeah. I'm sure you've had the odd hair raising time on the, underneath the helicopter. Yeah, no, it, it can be. Um, yeah, you really need a good day. Not much wind and. Uh, you get a good operator on the machine, it goes really well. Yeah, yeah, and, and it was trial and error for a start. We had it, it's all um, CAA approved. We, we we have a really good safety plan for doing it all. We have observers on board the machine, um, as well as the pilot. We have observers on the ground at all times to make sure things are you know things are okay, and we check the area thoroughly before we do any flying, looking for wires and talking to the farmers and all that sort of thing. Yeah. So, uh, Fairly labour-intensive and, and probably reasonably costly process, but obviously to, to get down to those 12 birds, it's uh, been well worth it. Indeed, Rob. And, and, and farms at Green Park, you know, we were talking to them prior to doing the control work, and uh, we were getting costings of them of, of crop damage, and they were coming out with six to eight thousand dollars a day in crop damage to rooks, and that was uh, you know mid uh, mid uh, 1980. So you know it was worth uh, big money in those days. So they were only too, too pleased to see the rooks go, and we've had terrific cooperation from farmers who've done all sorts of things to help us out whenever they can. That's great, because quite often with these sorts of operations, we, you know, we hear people criticising the, the cost and saying, well, you know, there's only a few birds and you're spending so much money, and that's a few hundred or thousand dollars, you know, an animal, and um, why are you doing it? But uh, it, it's really good when you look at it and see that cost-benefit down the track, isn't it? Yes, and we believe so long as we, we only have male birds, we won't, um, we, if we can keep an eye on these birds and know they're not going to start mating again, we don't get a female bird coming from the Otago area or Marlborough, who both have rooks, right. and, and start the process over again, um, our control will be pretty limited. Right. Um, if we have rooks on to crop paddocks now, um, we can shoot them with high powered rifles and things like that, so yeah, pretty basic control now. Yeah, We just want to, it's very important that we have that continual um, feedback from farmers that if they see rocks on their blocks in their properties, trees, on crop paddocks that they ring us and let us know. They've been absolutely fantastic doing so up till date. So that, that's your real message from today is... Absolutely right, uh, absolutely. If you see one of these beasties yep. out and no, about... Um, little jobs give, here. Give Dave how they, how they get hold of you, Dave. Just, uh, they can ring the Environment Canterbury and we get the message from the um, 
from the public relations people in the ECAM, which is probably the easiest way, so they can in Timaru or Christchurch, Kaikoura, and we can uh, we can go from there. We get very good feedback from ECAM. Okay. Mm -hmm.